It has sparked a controversy, a debate, and a conversation. Over the weekend, two deaths from meningitis. One, a Wisconsin college student, and the other, a Los Angeles man, both killed by the disease. Doctors say this is a tragic reminder of the importance of vaccines. And there's more. The New York City Health Department issued an alert after five cases of the measles occurred in Brooklyn in children who have not been vaccinated. In the case of meningitis, colleges urge incoming college students to get the meningitis vaccination. Places such as dorms and other college crowded settings are most susceptible. Sporadic cases of meningitis tend to occur in areas where a lot of people, uh, usually young people, are crowded together, and this would include uh, college dorms and athletic facilities, as well as army barracks. The vaccine, of course, is safe, so it's easy to recommend the meningitis vaccine. One college student says she took that precaution. I usually get vaccinations just to stay healthy. I mean, I get flu shots and stuff like that, so I think they're out in the public, so they should be healthy enough. In the case of the measles outbreak, the New York City Health Department says children should receive the first dose of MMR at 12 months old and the second dose at four to six years old. Delaying vaccinations could be harmful. In the case of children's vaccines, the risks of getting the vaccine are essentially zero, very close to zero. The real uh, risk of an adverse reaction from a vaccine occurs in less than 5% of patients and it involves local redness at the site of the injection or perhaps a day or two of a low-grade fever. Comparing that to the risks of getting the disease, which can be uh, cause severe illness for days or weeks or actually death uh, infrequently, uh, every child should get the routine recommended uh, vaccinations. But doctors say all of these cases beg the question, where are parents getting their information about vaccines and what or who influences their decision on whether or not to vaccinate their children? According to a study from Texas State University, friends and family are key factors. Parents who choose not to vaccinate their children base their decision on other family members' opinions. Researcher Emily Brunson says campaigns to increase vaccination rates often target pediatricians, but maybe it's time to consider a broader approach. That's the latest from the American Council on Science and Health.